Hi everybody, welcome back to the Feynman Technique. Um, today we're going to take a break uh, from doing integrals, and I know I haven't done like a classic Feynman integration example in a while, but this um, this Berkeley uh, math tournament sum um, came up several times in my YouTube feed, so I figured I'd give it a shot. And uh, pretty quickly I was able to um, find a way to solve this that kind of mimics the process that we use for solving integrals with Feynman integration. That is differentiation under the integral sign, except in this case we have no integral sign. This is a sigma sign <clears throat> um, or a summation sign. But uh, we can differentiate underneath a, a, um, a summation sign just as easily, uh, in fact, easier. The differentiation under the integral sign comes from the fact that you can differentiate under the sum sign or sigma sign. Um, so we're just going to be going back to that. But the process is very similar. So actually, it's exactly the same. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and start this off. Now, I'll just say uh to begin with I, I believe this method is much easier the, the method i'm going to show you is much easier than some of the other methods that you'll see uh online for this sum so uh take a look stick around to the end um here we go so we're just going to start with the basic exponential series this, this is the sum representation of the e, the function e to the x or the exponential function it's it's the sum as n goes from zero to infinity of x to the n over n factorial. All right. So we have that's equal to e to the x. So now what we're going to do is we're going to differentiate both sides of that equation with respect to x. And uh, of course, what you'll get is this right down here. All right. So the next step is we're going to multiply both sides of the resulting uh, equation by x. Um, and then we simplify. So we multiply both sides of this equation by x, giving us just this. And then we bring that x inside the sum sign, since it doesn't depend on n. And that'll just get rid of that negative 1 exponent right there. All right. So now we have this. Great. So let's differentiate both sides with respect to x again. Um, and here's the work in that. We differentiate both sides. Differentiating the left-hand side gives us this. Differentiating the right-hand side using the product rule and then simplifying gives us this. So we eventually obtain this. All right, great. Well, we've extracted an n squared out of it, so it would make sense after, after we simplify this and multiply both sides by x again to differentiate again. So first we multiply both sides by x, um, and then we bring the x inside the sum again, and this is what we end up with. All right, so like I said, we've got an n squared now. If we differentiate one more time, we'll have an n cubed, which almost which, which makes an expression that almost matches the sum we want to find. Okay, so again, differentiating with respect to x, blah, 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 this is what you end up getting right here, and then we do the same thing again, multiply both sides by x and simplify. And we just end up with this. All right, so now you can see if we evaluate this at the point x is equal to one, we'll have exactly the sum we were after. So let's evaluate on both sides at x is equal to one. And we end up with this. So we simple, if we simplify this, um, all we end up with on the left-hand side is n cubed over n factorial. That's exactly what we wanted to find. And on the right-hand side, we just end up with 5e. So the answer is the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of n cubed over n factorial is exactly 5e. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that, and we'll see you next time.